Good morning, guys. Today I thought while I get ready, I can walk you guys through my journey in STEM. So all the way from graduating high school to ending up doing a PhD in nuclear medicine. Where do I even start? Maybe with the fact that I literally hated school while I was in high school. I was a terrible student. I don't even know how I got into university. My GPA was terrible. Actually, when we would do those provincial type tests, I would usually do pretty good, but I wouldn't study. I hated studying. I hated the concept of school. I hated the thought of school. I have no no clue how I ended up wanting to pursue academia, to be honest. But for me, honestly, so I came from a small town in northern British Columbia, Canada. I literally didn't even know what a scientist was before I got to university. Because when you're from a small town and you're told to go to university, well, you assume that you're going to have to become a doctor, lawyer, dentist, or a pharmacist. And those jobs honestly never really interested me. So yeah, I didn't really want to go to university, so I never really gave school my best shot when I was in high school. I also found teachers were always super obnoxious and rude and like hated me, but I struggled in the classroom environment. I have really bad ADHD and high school was honestly really, really hard for me. And I feel as if my, I don't like calling it a disorder because I am almost in full control of it now as a full blown adult, but in high school, I definitely was not. And there was like zero sympathy, which made me just hate school and it made the teachers hate me. But at the same time, I was always really, really, really curious. But I was punished for my curiosity in high school. Teachers would get really upset when I would ask questions in class. It was like, shut up, Simona. Would you ever just stop talking? And the answer is no. I'm never going to stop talking or thinking. That's why I'm going to become a professor and an academic because I love to talk and I love to think. So I guess now you might be like, okay, well, why did you even go to university then? Well, my father who always, he's a very, very, very intelligent man. He never had the opportunity to go and get a degree and he could have been whatever he wanted to be as well. So he told me, Simona, you are going university whether you like it or not, or you are staying at home and you're paying rent. And I was like, okay, hey, well, I don't really want to get a job. <laughs> So I guess I'm going to university. So I applied to one university, the University of British Columbia in Kelowna. So UBCO. I somehow got into the school. I guess they just let everybody into university nowadays. And when I got there during the review week, all your classes, the teachers have one or two blocks where they go over the things that you should have learned in high school. I was like, oh no, I have no clue what any of these things are. What the hell? -y? Where am I? I should not have signed up to be here. So I got super stressed out to say the least and I hit the books. One thing about me though, when I do give something my best shot, I give it my all. I was like, I ain't gonna embarrass myself here. <laughs> you know, if I'm here to do this academic thing, then you betcha I'm gonna become an academic. So I, I literally hit the books. I created myself these schedules where I would give myself minute by minute tasks to do throughout the day. Starting at literally like five or 6 a.m. I would get up, and I would start studying one class, walk around the block or walk around the school, wherever I was studying, start studying the next class, go to class. In between my breaks, between one class and another class, I would study the things that I learned in the initial class. I was literally always studying, but I had catching up to do. Other people had prior knowledge before getting to university and I just didn't. And I ended up doing really, really well. Like I remember when I got my first like 100% back on like, all of my first midterms. I got like 90% to 100% on all my midterms. I was like, what the hell? I was told I was really stupid. I, I was told I shouldn't go to university because I was going to do really, really bad here. And, and I got the top mark on every test I wrote this semester. But at this point I was like, okay, I'm still really stupid. This was luck. You know, I, I have to work this hard to get these really good grades. So what did I do? I continued to work really, really, really hard. And I was in the general science program. So in my first year I took like math, biology, chemistry, physics, and then I had to take an English class. But still in my first year, there was not really a class that I really fell in love with, but there was a TA named call her Clara and I loved her. She like was my inspo and she was a chemistry major. So I was like, well, Clara's a chemistry major. I guess I could just be a chemistry major because I wanna be like her. So what did I do? I became a chemistry major, but I still didn't really love chemistry yet. I was like, I don't know if I should be here. Like, I don't even know if I like school. I don't know if I like science. I definitely don't even know if I like chemistry. What am, what am I even doing here? And then I arrived in second year organic chemistry and I, I was literally blown away. My professor, the way he lectured was just the most inspiring, engaging thing. I've ever witnessed. It, it was amazing. It, it gives me goosebumps till this day. 
Like, he, he is honestly will be my biggest inspo uh, forever. I want to be just like him. Uh, in many ways, and, and not in many other ways, if you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, he's a little bit controversial, but as a teacher, amazing. He breaks concepts down to the fundamentals in a way that anybody can understand them. And that's, till this day, the method I choose to take when I teach as well. Because I think it's beautiful to take things that are really, really complex and, and break them down and, and explain them in a simple manner. So from that day forward, I was like, all right, let's give this a go. I'm going to become a chemist, I guess. Specifically, I'm going to become an organic chemist because I love organic chemistry. Is that what ended up happening? No. Because 99% of the time when you start on an initial path, you don't end up just sticking to that path. There's so many side routes and I'm definitely somebody that is very curious, like I said. So when I see a, an opening in the path, I say, well, if I don't try this option, then I'm gonna always wonder what if. So I always take new opportunities as they come. I'm really a yes man when it comes to career type options. So after that, I decided, okay, well, if I'm gonna become a chemist, then I'm gonna need to get some work experience. So what did I do? I enrolled in the co-op program. And funny enough, my first two co-ops, I can do another video talking about exactly what I did in all of my co-op work terms, but here I'll just be brief. I hated it. I was like, if this is what being a chemist entails, then I'm crazy to think I'm going to be able to, you know, do a PhD. So my first two co-ops hated them, was super uninspired, was super unmotivated, felt like nobody believed in me. But you know, I have parents that were like, you know, you have to, you started something, so you better finish it. So I enrolled in my third co-op work term rather than just quitting co-op completely. I decided to complete my co-op degree. And I applied to the Canadian Nuclear Particle Accelerator, where I still work today. And I met, till this day, one of my most impactful mentors. She was my supervisor, a PhD student at the time, and I told her I was really uninspired when I showed up. I didn't know if I wanted to pursue grad school. And she greeted me with complete kindness, understanding, and she believed in me. It, may, it makes me almost tear up, you know, because I believe all somebody needs is somebody else to believe in them. So that's the importance that goes with finding a mentor. Do not stop, especially as a young woman or, or man in STEM, but looking for somebody that believes in you until you find it, because it's going to make all the difference. And she was like, okay, well, let's just take this day by day. Let's have some fun and do some science. And what happened? Well, she re rekindled that love that I had for STEM. I was like, no, STEM definitely is the place for me. STEM is hard, but there's no other career path that would work for me. Like this, this is my career path. This is what I'm going to do with my life. And that's the thing is like with the videos I post, I don't want to necessarily be like propaganda trying to get everybody to become a chemist. That's not the case. I want people to be inspired to do what they believe they are best at and what they love the most. A balance between being good at it and loving it. I think those two things are essential if you want to go far in your career. You have to love it, but you also have to be naturally a little bit talented at it. Because if you ask me, you know, why did I become a chemist? Well, chemistry actually, like, even though I was studying so, so much to catch up on all the things I did not learn while I was in high school, chemistry did come naturally to me. Like, there is something about chemistry that does just click. It almost does feel a little bit intuitive. Whereas with my physics and my biology classes, and even with math, I had to do way more practice questions. And I still, in the end, didn't really understand. I couldn't explain it to other other people. But with chemistry, it's so different. I can explain it to other people. And that is because I truly understand it. I didn't memorize chemistry. I understood chemistry. And when you understand something that reflects something inside of yourself, it says, you know what, maybe I do really understand this. I, I get it. You know, you got to get it. Don't stop looking for that thing in life that you just understand. I think that's a sign. I don't know from who. I'm not necessarily religious, but maybe it's a sign from God. God is telling you, you know, this is what you were sent here to do. So yeah, I did my co-op at the Nuclear Particle Accelerator and I loved it. I had so much fun and I was like, hey, well, now I want to be just like my new mentor. <laughs> So how would I be just like her? I would have to go and get a PhD, I guess. <laughs> so I applied for not actually the PhD program. I applied for the master's program because I was nervous about not liking the PI. Because like I said, your relationship with the PI is so, so, so important. I didn't want to commit to five years of my life without knowing if me and the PI that I now work for had a good relationship. 
and got along. But safe to say, yeah, things went really well. Me and her worked really, really well together. I am somebody that doesn't really like being micromanaged or told what to do. I don't know if you get that vibe about me, but it's true. And my PI is very, very intelligent. And she also is not a micromanager. So she doesn't tell me what to do. She gives me that freedom to explore things that I'm interested in. And I love it. And she believes in me. And, and that's all I need. That's the type of relationship that I need with a mentor and a PI. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm ready now <laughs> for school. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have questions, uh, let me know in the comment box down below. And if you made it this far, please make sure to subscribe. It means the world to me. I love you guys all so much. Thank you for supporting this channel. This video was actually a suggestion in one of my comment sections. So look, if you give me a comment and you suggest a video, the video will be given to you. This is how we do it. Have a good day or a night or afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. And if you don't believe in yourself just yet, know that I believe in you. Slay, kings and queens.